Hello everybody, welcome to my next video. Today we're gonna continue on our previous video. We have transferred data from our microcontroller over UART to our computer. Today we're gonna receive that data as well. If you search online, there are multiple ways which you can do that. You can poll, so you can just check if the input register is full or something is in it. But this takes a lot of CPU power. Therefore, we're gonna use an interrupt. Interrupt that is triggered when data comes into the input register. Firstly, we will start in the code. This is where we left off before. But today, this code is a little bit tidier. You can see our main loop is very short and we have fit all the initialization code into these two functions called GPIO setup and usart one setup. This function uh, initiates all the GPIO and this one initiates our usart. I also configured an LED on board to, uh, to be used so we can also toggle the LED so we don't need to use the transmit data as well. I will show you later. First of all, as you can remember, we have configured only user to be able to transmit today. We will add also Rx so the user peripheral will be able to receive data. Next, we have to configure that uh, triggering for the interrupt. To do that, we go into the user.c. As you can remember, we went past it when we were searching for the flags, and it's way here in the bottom. So here's the flag status, and at the top, here's the it config or interrupt config. So the logic behind this is that firstly, we need to uh, each function and each peripheral inside the processor, in our case, this is usart, can have its interrupt. But firstly, you have to enable the type of interrupt this peripheral gives. So we have to enable usart one and then at what event this peripheral will trigger an interrupt so we can see all the options here and we want this one this is an interrupt when the receive data register is not empty so when data is in it so some data must have come into it so we have replaced this one and type in enable so we have configured the interrupt for this peripheral now we just need to enable interrupt to this peripheral to do that, we can go into the terminal and search into the core for a file. This can be found inside the embedded folder, libraries, CMCs include core. So this is for my core, I have an F4 or M core from ARM. And here is a function called NVIC enable RAQ. This function enables an external interrupt. And this is an external interrupt as well. So we can copy this one. Control shift c and go into our project and paste it. But now we need to know what type of interrupt is. Well, it ends with rqn, so we can change this one with usart underscore rqn. So this will enable interrupt for usart, pardon, usart1. So usart1 interrupt is enabled. So uh, now we need to configure what uh, will the processor do when that interrupt is triggered. So there is a global function for each of the interrupts available, which can be seen in the startup file. The startup file is the, like the name suggests, the file is initializes the clock and everything. So here we have external interrupts and the one we're interested in is usart one IRQ handler. So this is the function that is initiated when the usart one interrupt is triggered. So we're going to copy this function and go into our editor. And it's a void function with no input data. So when we trigger this data, data has come into the processor. But just to be sure, we can check again if uh, the trigger has been met. So we can do an if statement. Here it is. This is the function that checks whether the specified usart interrupt has occurred or not. So there's an interrupt that we configured that happens on the receiving data. This one, usart it rx n e, the same as uh, here above. So we can plug this inside. 
So when uh, the data has come into it, uh, this needs to be uh, one. So it shouldn't be zero. Also, we forget to specify which usart port it is, usart one. And this has to be one. And if this is different from reset or zero, the if statement is gonna start. So let's check if a certain letter has been pressed. So let's go if and go into above receive. And search for receiving data. If the received data has been a certain character. So if the receiving data We change this to usart1. If this data is equal to a single quote for a character, let's say k. And if k has been pressed, we want to, for starters, toggle an LED. For toggling LED, in Arduino you could use some kind of flag to check if the LED has been set to high and now you have to set it to low. But luckily, we have in GPIO, we can search for to toggle. Here it is, LG GPIO toggle bits. So this is going to toggle the bit. It's going to use an XOR operation, as you can see here, on the ODR register. So this is really simple. We can just toggle bits on our GPIO. I, as I said before, I use, I'm using GPIO D and the LED 15 is the one that is initiated. So if this interrupt happens and it's because the uh, interrupt happened because the receive, uh, we have received some data, we check if this data is okay, then we toggle bits. This is all we really need to do. So we're gonna toggle LED, we can save this and go back to our project, run make, and see if I've made any mistakes. Oh, it compiles fine. We burn it. And I'm gonna bring in a terminal, simply our Arduino terminal will do. Let's just restart it for the sake of it. And I'm gonna send K. Oh, and I need to turn on the camera. Here it is, the LED is on. And if I send another large K again, it resets. Set and reset. Great, so it works. We can also send data as well. So if we received K, we can also uh, send something back. So if you remember, use usart underscore send data. Usart one, and we can send, for example, um, hi. So this is, I didn't show this before in the previous videos, but some crude ways to say to send data as a string. This is hi, and if we want to make a new line, so we won't see hi letters or words just stacked next to each other, we can send. A line ending so or a new line command and this is a command it looks like this it's slash n which makes a new line but this is a two character uh, word for say and this is not correct we have to send a command this is a special kind of word as you can say so we can go back to our ascii table this is the one i'm using and if you see in the beginning the new line feed command is right here and it's decimal 10 or hex uh, 0x0a in 16-bit value. So we can either send a 10 or a 0x0a. So this is a 10 in hex. But we're gonna send 10. So this is a new live feed. So we're gonna expect high and 10. Also, this command just sends data and doesn't check if the send register is empty. Because when we send data, if we just scroll through these functions, data can corrupt each other and we can only send this one at the end. So we can just see new lines. So to correct that, to make sure that the send register is empty before we send another data, 
we're gonna use the flag as before and we can just borrow it from here this while loop which is gonna check if the transmit register is empty before we send each of this data we go back we compile and upload the code and we go back to our terminal and we send k and it's gonna send hi as you can see our our LED is turned on and if I send another K it's still gonna say hi and LED is gone off perfect now it works so you can do this in any combination uh, if you're sending if you're receiving a string you can always do this and save this into a buffer so we can send it into some kind of buffer mon probo buffers they not rest um,
Also, we can comment this out and just write the using the user send text command over here. And you can just write LED on and our terminator. You can see it's in a different color. So it's gonna do a new line. So we can save this and we can burn it. And go back to our terminal. If we send a K, lead the on and you can see the LED is on, under K, the LED is off. But you can also configure it so you can say uh, LED off. Uh, the purpose of this tutorial is just to see how this works and you can do uh, your own code. It's This is the all the technicalities of turning it on and everything else is just a combination of this. So that's it. I'm going to comment this uh, tutorial out and upload it to Mega so it will be available to you. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.